was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Verse 8, and David inquired at the Lord saying, shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered, pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them without fail, recover all. I want to talk with you in a time that's allotted to me. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, spoiler alert. Spoiler. In this particular text here, the scripture says it talks about how then when David in verse 1, it, it came to pass that when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day that the Malachites had invaded the south and Ziglag and smitten Ziglag and burned it with fire had taken the women captive and that were therein, slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away, went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives, their sons, their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people were with him, lifted up their voice and wept until they could weep no more, had no more power to weep. And verse 5 said, And David's two wives were taken captive, uh, and names Ananoam and Zezerites, Jezerites and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. But here's where it says, and David was distressed for the people spake of stoning him uh, because the soul of the people was grieved and every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. And in this particular scripture, it let us know that sometimes uh, in this year of 2019, some of you may have lost some stuff. Some of you may look like things was not coming together like you thought it should, wasn't working out for you. But I'm here to encourage you. Some of you may have cried. Some of you may have boo-hooed. Some of you may have almost wanted to walk away from God. But I'm here to encourage you. Like David said, he, the scripture said David had to encourage himself. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself. Sometimes you have to reach back and say, self, you be encouraged. And in this particular text, it talked about how that it is so interesting, uh, Pastor Will, how that they didn't slay anybody. They just took them. Are you with me? It looked like they may have could have handled it if they would have slew them. And nobody wants to lose anybody, but it looked like that would have been better. But that was like making mockery. Oh, my God. It was like making mockery. In other words, you say you serve a mighty God. Why would he let you lose your house? Why would he let you lose your car? Why would he let you go through all of that sickness? Anybody know what I'm talking about here? And so here, but I'm here to encourage you, let you know you're about to get your stuff back. All I need is about 500 people just to say, I believe that. And so the scripture says here that David and his men, when they came back, they were so distressed. And, and you can imagine how they were feeling. I mean, they was, here it is. They doing what they thought they were supposed to do. Anybody like that? You know you obey God. You know you're doing what God told you to do. And look like, is this the results, God? Am I the only one? Is this, this what it's supposed to look like, God? I, I was faithful on my job. I went there early. I stayed late. I worked overtime even when I wasn't getting paid. And God, this is what I get, a layoff? They let me know that I'm being displaced. But tell you, they about to get, you recover all. Mm -hmm. And so here it says that um, David said this. And this is what you got to understand, too. This is why when you're going through stuff, yes, you're going to feel it emotionally. But this is when you need to lean on this. Lean on this word, because let me tell you, it's going to come a time when you're really going to need the word, because the verse that I didn't read in your hearing was verse 7. And David said to Abathar the priest, Amalek's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod, and Abathar brought uh, the, hither the ephod to David. Why did he want the ephod? The ephod was like a linen robe, mm -hmm. because why? He said, I got to go in intercession. Sometimes you got to change your garment in order to go before the presence of God. Yeah. Am I talking to anybody? So he said, look, I need to go. Because, see, he was facing pressure. Y'all ain't faced no pressure. Y'all ain't been to get backed up against the wall, rock between the, heart, between the rock place and the heart place and the rock place or whatever. You know, but y'all ain't been there. Uh-uh, uh-uh. But, but, but here's, he said, I got, I got to change. He said, because what I'm wearing right now, I don't want to go before God. So he said, I got to change. Bring me an ephah. Now, if you even search the scripture, you find that normally the only ones that wore an ephah was a priest. So David says, I'm willing to put down my king. 
my crown. I'm willing to put down my crown to worship. If, if the position, I don't know who I'm speaking to that this is relevant for, but if your position stops you from worshiping, you need to sit down somewhere. Okay, that's all right, because too many of us get too important. Now, there are people watching, all right? There's too many get important. They want to sit in the pulpit, and they want to cross their legs like they all of that. Now, if your leg hurting, you put it up, you know what I'm saying? But, but here is letting us know that none of us should be so high with our anointing, with our gifts, that we can't break down in worship. Really, it's not even a breakdown. It's really a go up. Mm -hmm. All right, somebody going to get a while and so David inquired of the Lord saying shall I pursue after this truth because why David said you don't need to make certain decisions when you're emotionally stressed Look at the text. He said, so God, he said, look, there is a people that is looking at me. Matter of fact, the text says that they wanted to stone David. See, some folks out of their emotions, they make decisions that they will later regret. Anybody ever been there? I know I have. All right. You make decisions out of emotional chaos. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important to stable yourself, to settle yourself before you make a decision. Mm -hmm. uh-huh because oh i don't want to mess with that one uh-huh so he puts on this priest's garment and go before the lord watch this now he ain't begging david did not come in the posture of the distress that he was in he now took on another role he said now i gotta come as a priest excuse me i had a holy ghost moment because why remember when david was facing goliath david was the only one that came from a place of worship that's why he wasn't intimidated by the spirit and the fear that Elijah was, I mean, Goliath was bringing to him. Everybody else was caught up in that cloud. Ooh, what are you saying? So David said, I'm going back to my roots. Some of us got to go back to praying. Some of us got to go back to fasting. Some of us got to go back to seeking the face of God. When I say seek the face of God, I'm not talking one, two, three, three minutes, ooh, 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 I lasted three or four minutes, five minutes. No, 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 no. I'm talking about staying in the face of God until God touch you and say, get up. Uh huh. That's where we're going this year because we're going to start seeking the face of God as never before. I'm tired of going to church, doing church like we always did and ain't seeing no results. Oh, my God. Uh huh. So what are you saying? I said, I'm going. I'm looking for the seekers. The ones that I ain't talking about them, them seekers, what they be talking about, people going around seeking church, you know, just want something quick and fancy. No, I'm talking about folk that don't mind getting before the face of God, staying there as long as it's necessary and until God said, I got you. And I'm not talking about a quickening. Mm -mm. I'm talking about really seeking the face of God where we going to get some oil. Whoa. Oh, man, that just messed some folks up. So David says in this text, he inquired. The word inquire means, God, I'm, I'm coming to a place where I know you normally speak. Because why? God could have spoken even while they were in that atmosphere of being stressed out, but they wouldn't have heard him. Because if they did, I'm going to mess with you on the text. If they did, they would have recognized that this is the same David that when they were in the cave of Bedulam that they came to him. They was distressed. They was broke. They was disheartened. But yet the scripture says they were gifted men. I believe and I prophesy God gave me to send in some gifted people in this ministry. Uh -huh. And they're not going to look like some of y'all. That's all right. Uh -huh, I got to prophesy to myself sometimes. Watch this out. And David inquired the Lord, says, shall I pursue after them? Oh, this is another thing too. When it says that he inquired, he had to know where to find God. Do you not know when you're stressed out, sometimes you don't know which way to turn. So you have to change garments in order to realize I can't act like this in this garment. Okay. That's a Bible study one. Watch this down. And so when he says he inquired the Lord, and this is what he did. He didn't go and say, Lord, you know, these men, they want to stone me. No, 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 no. He didn't waste time like that. Excuse me, I had no Holy Ghost moment. When you spend time with God, you know exactly which room to find him. Because he's always waiting for you. So all he had to do was when he went in his priestly garment before God, 
God says, how can I serve you? So he says, ask me. And this is something else, too, in this season that God is bringing. He said, ask me, and I will show you great and mighty things to come, which you know not of. God is going to reveal to us what his word is really saying concerning us. All right, somebody eating. Watch this now. And so the Bible says, and he acquired the Lord saying, shall I pursue? There was one question. Shall I pursue? That's the first one. And shall I what? Overtake them. Now, watch this. Something else that David teaches us in that verse. All right? I wish I can go further verses, but I think I better start right there. Watch this now. Something else he teaches us is learn how to mature to the place that not only do you ask the one question, but you make sure you get the full questions answered with a period and not with a question mark. Because in the text, it says, shall, uh, shall I pursue them and shall I overtake them? The, he was two questions, but yet it would, if God gave him the answers, his spirit would be settled. Look, why? Why? Because you got to understand. Oh, Spirit had another Holy Ghost moment. He had to go back after being in the presence of God feeling good. But he had to face those men who wanted to stone him. So he had to take off his priest garment, put on a garment that they could receive him in, and say, we're going to win. That's, that's a plays one right there. And he answered him, oh, 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 excuse me, I had another Holy Ghost moment. Watch this now. And it doesn't say God answered him. It says he answered him. Wow. <laughs> oh, excuse me, I had another Holy Ghost moment. What you saying? Because when you are in the presence of God and you have a relationship with God, you know how he sounds to you. And you know when he knows how you sound to him? Y'all got it like that. Let me give an example. Anybody in here ever been in love? Now, don't act like y'all got halos over here and, you, you know, y'all was born like that and all that. When you're in love with somebody, all right? Now, I ain't going to go into all this and all this and this, all this, this, all this, this, all this, this. But when you hear their voice on the phone, don't you recognize it's them? Okay, all right, I'm going to give y'all the flip side. When you upset with somebody, don't you know their voice? Are you with me? Stay with me because I want y'all to stay safe, all right? So watch this now. So, and he answered him, and he said what? Pursue, for thou shalt surely. He didn't say maybe. He didn't say you might. And he didn't even throw in for the teachers a possibility. He said that thou shalt surely, and I love this word that he says. Watch this. He uses the words David uses to let David know he heard him. He said, thou shalt surely overtake them. But something in the equation God added, and he multiplied. He said, and without fail, recover all. Anybody got that? Without fail, recover all. Now, now listen, you don't often find God using the word fail. But he says in this text, without fail, recover all. Anybody got that? In other words, you're going to get some stuff because they took your stuff. Anybody got that? You're going to get some stuff because they took your stuff. I, I, I don't know who this is for, but you're going to get some stuff because they took your stuff. Wait, 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 wait. What, what you talking about? Wait a minute, wait. Wait, Pastor, before you sit down, what are you, what are you saying? Uh-huh. Visualize, if you would. The enemy took something from you. You're going back to get what he took. I had another Holy Ghost moment. Watch this now. If he took from you, who else did he take from? And who else did not come back to get their stuff? And when you start recovering, you're going to recover stuff 
that some other folks left. Oh, oh. When he said you shall recover all, he doesn't say just what he took from you. He said you're going to recover all, which means he has to give you recompense for what he took. This, this, is anybody excited about God right now? And so when, that's a spoiler alert. The enemy thought he was going to tip the scale against you, but God turning that stuff around and said, I'm about to give you more. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute before we start dancing. I know y'all want to. Watch this, before we start dancing, here's something else I need you to understand in this text. The Amalekites was not broke. They had stuff because the Amalekites were known for always being in wars. And they would never go fighting somewhere without taking gold and treasures. Excuse me, I had no whole ghost moment. Sometimes God will use a negative situation to put you in a positive place. Because watch this. God, in that transaction, was elevating the children of Israel to a whole nother level. Because once you go into the Amalekites camp and take that, guess what? That gets added to your resume. God. Are y'all with me? It gets added to your resume. Watch this. So the scripture says what? Uh, 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 and Kish, uh huh. I'm in another book. Are you with me? So watch this now. And so they went, and the Bible said, David, verse 10, pursued, and he and 400 men, 200 abode behind, but which were so faint they couldn't go. Because listen, there are some people you're going to have to fight for them. That's why we can't be stuck on us. Uh-huh. Watch this now. Uh-huh. And so David, oh my God. Watch this now. Uh-huh. Watch this. This is good. And David, verse 17. And David smote them from the twilight even until the evening of the next day. And there escaped not a man of them save 400 young men which rode upon David. In other words, and here's verse 18. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives. Verse 19. And there was nothing lacking to them. Are you with me? And there was nothing lacking to them, not a small nor great, not a sons or daughters, not a spoil nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered what? I can't hardly hear you. Watch this. When David and his men recovered all, something else happened. Not only did they recover stuff, but David was also restored in the presence of the people. Because the scripture says, and they begin to honor David. There are folks who have discounted you, counted you out, but it's going to come the time where they're going to have to honor you because of the grace and favor on your life. All right, that's for the people on the air. You shall recover all. You shall recover all. I said you shall recover all. So that's it. Just wanted to encourage you to let you know, spoiler alert. Because there's another scripture that says that what the locust and the canker worm in the book of Joel has eaten and destroyed but I'm going to restore to you the years that the locust and the canker worm has eaten in other words what would your life look like 
if God would add 10 years worth of interest to your bank account. 10 years worth of health back to your life. When people see you, they like, how old are you really? Are anybody there? Are y'all with me? See, just because you move forward chronologically, it doesn't mean that you have to age. Are, are you with me? Are, are you with me? Because God can restore you. Tell your neighbor, God restoring me. I said, God is restoring me. I'm about to recover. Oh, 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 oh. Excuse me. I don't know how it goes moment. Here's another thing. The word restore suggests that what you once had, you're going to get that back. Are you with me? Once you what had, you're going to get that back. Somebody, somebody going to get it. Somebody going to get it. I'm going to mess with you. Are you with me? Some of you, your dreams for success were stolen. But God's about to restore. Ooh. I say he's about to restore. I mean, now, let me break this down. I might as well add this in the equation because sometimes when we hear the word restore, we just think about it just automatically going to come to my bank account. No, it means that you're probably going to be getting some dreams like 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, which means your, your normal rest time will probably be interrupted because of the restoration. I think you ain't going to have to pay for restoration now. There is some work involved. <laughs> you know, when we get a word from God, we just like go on the beach. We want to put our feet up and drink some lemonade. No, you're going to have to. There is a price for restoration. He says, shall I pursue? Shall, will we overtake them? The scripture says, yes, pursue. But it, did, it had to come at a cost. Come on, give God some praise. That's good. I'm done. Yeah, I'm praying. Ho shaka bo Somebody need to bless him right there. Somebody need to bless God right there for recovering all. Somebody need to give God some praise right there. Oh, come on, right there, right there. Oh, come on, he just answered a prayer for you. Come on, he just answered a prayer for you. Come on, God just, hey, bo shata. Yes, God, I thank you right now. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. I need you to see yourself recovering all right now. I need you to see yourself recovering all. Because the scripture says, after they recovered, they rejoice. I said, 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 after they recovered, they rejoice. 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 After the hip up on shata. After they recovered, they rejoice. After they recovered, they rejoice. Come on, give him some praise right there. Come on, give him some praise right there. Come on, give him some praise right there. Oh, bless him right there. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Whoosha. Some of you going to get your praise dance back. Some of you ain't danced in a long time for God. But you're going to get your praise dance back. Sunday, thank you. Father, we thank you. We bless and praise exalt you. For you alone are worthy of all the praise. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Thank you for encouraging us through this scripture. Shall we pursue? Shall we overtake them? And your response was pursue. Who shot? Pursue, 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 pursue. Pursue your dreams. Pursue your goals and aspirations. Pursue what God has invested into you. Pursue the things of God. Pursue the word of God. Pursue God in fasting and prayer. Pursue God by seeking his face and not his hand. 
pursue for thou without fail shall recover all. And so, Father, we thank you for encouraging us. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for what you're doing in and through each and every one of our lives. Our lives are made the more richer as a result of spending time in your word, time in your presence, and time in fellowship with one another. We thank you that the enemy, the devil, will not be able to steal not one word that we've heard that's connected to our destiny. We bind the spirit of sabotage in the name of Jesus. We bind the spirit of depletion in the name of Jesus. We bind the spirit of hemorrhaging in the name of Jesus. We shall not lose anything else. But we're going to have more than enough. More than enough. More than enough. More than enough. But we thank you for giving us the wisdom knowledge and understanding of how to be good stewards of what we recover we will not be wasters swanderers oh god but we will be wise servants oh god in the name of jesus so we thank you for crowning us activating the spirit of wisdom knowledge and understanding the spirit of counsel might the fear of the lord with anointing of god will be evident in our life increasing on a daily basis and we bless you and praise you and honor you now. For we cover this word in the blood of Jesus. We thank you for answer prayer in Jesus' name. Let all the people give God a real praise in this place. <laughs>